All right, welcome to Operation End Times. Today is March 30th, 2012, and it's a glorious time to be alive, my friends. To all my fellow watchers, to all my fellow Jedi warriors for Jesus, the end times are upon us, my friends. But is it, it is a time for celebrating, a time for amazing things to happen. That being said, today I'm here to talk about the Venus Conspiracy 2012. I'm going to unravel it for you. And, uh, you know, it's taken me quite a while to kind of mentally be prepared to do this video and I think I'm gonna have to do several videos so this is part one of the unraveling of the Venus conspiracy but uh, you know as we all know amazing things have been happening and uh, you know the planet Venus is basically always involved and that's kind of what drew my attention. So over the last several months, you know, uh, it's just the planet Venus. Why? What's its role? <laughs> and you know, what I found is just absolutely astounding. You know, it's probably the greatest secret mystery of all time. Of time. The greatest mystery of time. That's what it is. Because what you're going to find out is it's all about time, and time is running out. You know, whether the end, and you know, the end, you know, the end is just the end of something for someone and certain people, but for a lot of us, it's not the end. It's the transition or the beginning of something new, something wonderful. So, you know, as we proceed to talk about the Venus Conspiracy, you're going to hear a lot of dark, gloomy, doomsday type stuff. You know what? That, that, somebody might be experiencing that. But, uh, you know, what I have found, because, you know, I've always been a conspiratorial kind of a person, but, uh, you know, the Freemasons, the Illuminati... You know, the World Bank, the New World Order, the uh, uh, Council of Foreign Affairs, you know, all that stuff. The Catholic Church, you know, ruled by secrecy. Conspiracies are everywhere. But what I think, what I believe at this point, basically all of them fold in and under the Venus Conspiracy, which is the greatest conspiracy of all times. And that is what you will find out. But, you know, that's been, I've been trying to figure out how to present all this, you know, because time is running short, and what we're about to see unfold right before our very eyes this year in 2012 must be understood. So, Venus is a planet. It's a star. It's known as the morning star. You know, Venus and Mercury, you can actually see them in the morning, when they're rising with the sun. Um, you know, what I'm going to tell you is, you know, I'm, I'm not going to walk on eggshells like when I talk about this stuff because, you know, just, just I will say it once and that'll be the end of it. But, you know, uh, when I've been researching this stuff, you know, when we're talking about the end times and Venus and the Pallades and the Pyramids of Giza, you know, and the pyramids of Mexico, and uh, just all these prophecies and prophecy fulfillment. You know, uh, inevitably, you end up looking up at the heavens and the stars and for signs. So, you know, what I'm going to tell you is, uh, you know, doing my research, I've ran across a lot of people who have provided information, whether it was right or wrong. The truth or some falsehood, some delusion, some lie. You know, that's what we have to discern. And in that regard, 
That's where I look to God and my relationship with Jesus to seek the truth. But in my research, I've definitely found a lot of people that said they were either talking to God, talking to Jesus, talking to aliens like Palladians or, you know, or spirits, you know, from the fifth dimension, either good or bad. And you know what? Anytime you get that kind of information, I don't rule it out, but you take it with a grain of salt. But I'm going to tell you right now, as far as what I'm presenting to you today, uh, there's no mysterious voice or spirit or person talking to me from the fifth dimension or from heaven. And, and you know, God isn't really talking to me directly as far as a voice saying, Ben, hear me now, you know. But, uh, you know, does God, is God working within me? I hope so, you know, because I, I seek the truth. And, uh, you know, the other thing is, you know, a lot of people, a lot of Bible thumpers, perhaps, you know, might throw the like, hey, you know, you're worshiping the stars instead of worshiping God. You know what? No, no, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't worship the stars, you know, but what I'm going to tell you is a lot of people do. And a lot of people worship the sun or think the sun is God. You know, it, look at world history, man. That's what you're going to find is civilizations like the Aztecs and, and, and the Egyptians. Yeah, they worship the sun as God. And that's part of what we're going to find in this Venus conspiracy as it's unraveled. You know, can, can, the, can the sun represent God? Maybe. Can a star represent God? Perhaps. You know, that's the whole thing. Is when you look up into the heavens, it's up to interpretation. But there's a truth in the heavens. There is. It's divine order. And there's some chaos up there, you know, somebody's trying to move the pieces and confuse everybody. But it's divine order. And if you actually understand what you're looking at, you know, the planets and the stars and the constellations, there's truth there. That's what I believe. But I'm not worshiping the stars. <laughs> and you know what? This stuff perhaps drifts into astro 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 astrology or, uh, uh, you know, the horoscope and that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a little bit of that mixed into all this. But uh, you know what? The Bible's a huge source of information. And, you know, for the Bible thumpers, you know, in the book of Job, God talks about the Pallades and Orion. You know, when he set the foundations of the world. And then in the book of Revelations, you know, uh, we're told that the morning stars were there when the foundations of the world were set, you know, being Venus and Mercury. So, you know, the truth of it is, is there are stars and signs in the heavens all throughout the Bible, you know, all throughout the Bible. God put them there. <coughs> you know, when Jesus was born. The star of Bethlehem. People have speculated as to what that is. I'm going to tell you. My guess, Venus. Maybe in conjunction with something else. Jupiter, who knows. But, you know, we'll kind of start off there. Because you know what? I want to make sure people know, you know, kind of where this is headed. But let's go to the very end of the Bible. Revelations 22, verse 16. Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. There it is. Jesus himself saying, I am the morning star. Venus. You know, so we don't need to argue like, like, man, is Jesus Venus or is Venus Jesus? You know, it either represents him, maybe he controls it. I don't know the finer details. I'm not God. But Jesus himself is telling us, and, and you know what, all throughout the Bible, you'll see there are references, you know, in 2 Peter 1.19, he's called the day star. In Luke 1, verses 78 to 79, he's called the morning star. You know, Matthew 2, verse 2, Jesus is called the morning star. You know, some of you will say, oh, well, there's a verse in the Old Testament, it's Isaiah, and isn't, isn't the morning star, isn't Lucifer called the morning star? Well, yeah. But you know what I'm going to tell you is, 
you know, when you're dealing with all this stuff, and, and I touched in this when we were going through Job, the end time man, where we understood that even though it's the most ancient of stories, it's actually the story of us in the end times, Job. And, you know, once again, there's God talking about the Pallades and the belt of Orion and, and signs in the heavens, right? But, uh, uh, you know, Job there... God, I'm losing my train of thought. Pardon me for one second. But, uh... You know, what, what we see is uh, even there in the Old Testament is Venus, you know, having a role and, and God saying this is a marker in, in how things, you know, why things are, the big plan and mystery of life. So anyway, uh, I'm going to skip to another Bible verse. <laughs> and this is Matthew 24. Verses uh, 29 and 30. And this is Jesus talking again. He's talking about the end times. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from the heavens, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. <laughs> so right there, Jesus is telling you the sun, the moon, the stars, all of them will be shooken. In the skies, things that we're seeing at the end times, right after the tribulation, after the tribulation. And we're still there. You know, all these rapture people saying, we're going to be raptured before the tribulation? I don't buy it. You know, and that's what we got to get ready for, is how to successfully transit the tribulation. Speaking of transits, that's the big event that's happening this year on 6-6, June 6th of 2012. Venus will be transiting the sun, and we'll get more into what that means as well. But going to verse 30, it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Not, hey, then shall appear the Son of Man in heaven. No, it's the sign of the Son of Man. And what is the sign of the Son of Man? He tells us. He says, I am the morning star. So what it's saying is, then shall appear Venus in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And you know what? Venus represents love. And that, my friends, those of us that have our focus in life that have our heads screwed on straight and our hearts in the right place and we're bearing fruit showing that we understand that you know we have celebration because this is something good and it's a change which is going to bring about you know I could use the term heaven but a better world you know where there's no disease no hunger no pain no sorrow so something to look forward to but see, what I'm going to tell you is when you're looking at all of this, you know, just like when we were talking about Job, you know, there's time is like a, a, a cycle. So there's reflections where things in the past are things in the future. And there's also mirror images where if something is good and bad, like a Christ and an antichrist, you know, so likewise, so it is when we're looking at this end time stuff, you know, Venus, you know, could be good or bad. You know, the good is Jesus and love. The bad might be associating it with, with Satan. But I tell you what, we're going to get neck deep into that in part two because you're going to see all the dots connect. And the both the yin and the yang, the positive and the negative look as far as how people look at these stars and signs, it fits perfectly with what the heck's going on in the world right now at the end times. All right, you know what? I'm going to sign off. This is Ben Helstead, your Jedi warrior for Jesus. This is Operation End Times, and we're going to unravel the Venus conspiracy, man. April 3rd, a big marker in the heavens. Venus aligns with the Pallades. It may be the fulfillment of Revelations 5, where the Lamb approaches the th throne of God and is worthy to open the, the, the scroll, the seals. We'll get into that in part two, man. So uh, stay with us. God bless y'all. And, uh, you know, get your tribulation on and uh, think positive.